Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Brigitte from Paraprint. Today is the first video on a series on how to use your slicer software to create infill textiles. This is just one of the method how to create 3D printed textiles. And to be fair, I've actually never done this before. So when I first opened Cura, there's like 14 different options for infill types. I mean, lightning. So basically I decided to save you guys some troubles and a lot of time and a lot of filament um, by trying them all out. The way I'll be going through them is one video per infill type. This video is just going to be about the grit infill type, which is the first one out there. So the filament is going to stay the same. The printer is going to stay the same. All the other Cura settings are going to stay the same. And the only thing that changes is the grit type infill percentage. And so within this video and within all of them, I'm gonna go through 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 80%, 80 and 90 10 different samples per video, just to give an idea of what the higher percentages do, what they look like, what they feel like, so that for your project, you know exactly like, okay, I should get started with this infill at this percentage because that is the effect or closest to the effect that I'm looking for. So when you first open Rhino, you would want to use this box tool to create the textile swatch. We just set the first point to zero and then we make it 90 by 90, which is nine centimeters by nine centimeters because I'm using millimeters for the Rhino settings. And then so switching to the perspective just to show you guys what it looks like. And then the height will be 0.6 millimeters, which is at a layer height of 0.23 layers printing. So that's the first one. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is actually copy them over um, to create a little text inside the swatches. This is something, you know, if you do not need this, do not want this, it's just for myself, I like to keep track of what settings have been used. So that would be the first, um, like the T something. Uh, so T2 in this case are the second settings I've set up in Cura. And then I'm using the G for grit and then I'll use the percentage number after that. And by putting that into the textile swatch, you can actually, you know, leave them lying around and uh, look at them and just toss them back on the table and there's no need to keep them really nicely in the swatch book. A little bit more design time, but after that, it saves you a lot of trouble uh, organizing the swatches. Anyways, that's a personal preference. So what I'm doing here is I use the text tool and then after that, put it onto the textile. And in order to make it like this, I moved it up 0.5 and moving it down 0.6. And now doing that for all of them, there's a link to the Dropbox in the description. That's where you can download all of these files. So no worries if you don't feel like creating a hundred different textile swatches digitally. So then we're moving on to the next part which is actually uploading it in Cura. So as you can see, I already have the artillery printer on Cura installed. I'm using a Sidewinder 2. Here you can see the machine settings and my start and end code, which I customized. I'll put those in the description box below as well. They're still not perfect, but I quite like them like this because it just works well with the filament. Filament as well has been custom set up I just opened the setting box. You can just copy all of this information over. The only reason why it's useful to have is because it will calculate the price and the amount of material used based on the density and all the other information. So definitely put that in there if you want accurate information on how much material is being used and how expensive it is. The filament that I'm printing with is from Rikus, which I'm probably pronouncing it badly. They have a huge range of flexible filaments. This is the box that it comes in. Um, it's not the yellow one because it's on the printer. 
So you can see it's pretty flexible. Moving on, I'm using a nozzle of 0.4. In the settings, I'm using all the different settings that are available, visible. Definitely, if you're just starting out, no need to put all the settings out there. Uh, I'm not using all of them either. I just like to know what else is there. Next step is actually uploading the file. And as you can see, if we then slice it, you can see how it will look like after it's been printed. And you can see the different types of movements and different types of prints, printing components, let's say, that the printer is making. So the blue ones are the travel lines, the uh, yellow or the orange one is for the infill. And as you can see, as the layer goes up and up, you can see how it builds up these layers. Red is for the wall or shell, depending on how you call it. And um, the green one currently, you can see the inner wall is not there, but that's just because I'm printing with a wall thickness of one. So if we just change that, so here if we just change that around and we make the wall setting two instead of one, then you see that actually that green line becomes visible and you have a bit of a sturdier border around your design, which in my case isn't quite what I'm looking for. And then these are the other settings. I'm just gonna go through them real quick um, just to show it. Top bottom obviously needs to be off, otherwise you cannot see the infill. Um, the infill is at 5%, which is the first one in the list. And using the grid, so actually it's set at lines, so I'll just change that to grid now. So that's actually quite a lot bigger than the lines grid, 5%, which is interesting. And you can see that it does it slightly different. So rather than going one by one, it actually builds up the whole grid in one layer. Okay, material 235 degrees is fine. Uh, bed temperature is zero because it's really not necessary if rigorous. I was printing something else before that. So putting that back to zero. The flow here is set at something else but actually i put it back down to zero after printing because it was too high infill speed i'm not gonna go over them but it was 20 for everything and 15 for the walls just to slow it down a little bit on the lettering to make sure it comes out properly um, cooling all as is bill plate adhesion there's none and then the last three i don't use so all of these settings that I've just changed, I'm going to update that to the current T2 setting so that next time if I'm looking at these and I'm like, oh, actually the setting of T2 was so much better than T1, for example, I can always move back and forth to whatever setting I've set for a certain print, which is just a little bit of my nerdiness. And then the next thing is to actually export this file get the g-code, put the g-code in your USB, put it on the printer and print it. And here you can see what my custom g-code, the start code does. It just prints a little line and then it goes up a little bit to take off a bit of the pressure, I guess, of the nozzle. And then that is 5% done. The next one is to actually go in there, upload your new file, change the infill and get the g-code again and print again and do that for 20% same process for 30% for 40% 50% 60% 70% 80% and finally 90% here are the results let's take a look just to go over them one by one we start with the 5%. Very flexible, pretty thin. Easily fold in half. Then if we go one higher, easily to fold in half as well. There's less stretch in this way than there is in this way. So then we go to the 20%. This is the 30%. 
it already starts becoming a oh oops I just the words um becoming a lot more stiff so i need to put a, a lot more force for this to hold 40 percent and i'm actually pulling quite hard just to show you guys one other thing that I think is really interesting to notice is that, for example, this is one of my lingerie sets. And if you compare that to the 40%, you can actually see that it lines up perfectly. So 40% is actually perfect for your lingerie standard lace which of course as you see this is a lot more rigid here than if you compare that to say so yeah, in that sense it's, it's not comparable <laughs> i keep pulling a bit too hard i think the print is not perfect 50 percent this one is not flexible at all anymore so yeah and i got the 60 percent it is still, there is some pull here, but really, really minimal. It is really, really rigid. It starts becoming a bit more plasticky from this end. It is still slightly transparent. You can see my hands through it. Overall, quite gorgeous for a bag or something like that. This is the 70%. It really becomes like I say like a sheet of latex almost, that's kind of what it feels like. There's some give, especially in this direction, but really not much. Folding in half works, but then it shoots back relatively fast. 80%, even more so, but you can still see my hands through, so it is still see-through. And then here is the 90%, and you see this really weird, I don't know what it is. I thought at first that it may be because the settings of the printer were slightly different from the other prints. So I actually printed it again with better settings and as you can see, still there. So I think this has to do with the direction that Kira chooses to print it in. And so these are actually printed line by line next to each other, whereas these uh, Kira prints kind of lines quite far apart from each other and then fills them in further. So maybe that's much harder to space out than placing them actually next to each other. If you look back at, for example, the 80, you can already kind of see that it's there as well. The same structure of up until here, it just prints it line by line and then here it starts doing something weird. Um, you can see it in the 70 as well. And you can see it in the 60, but it is not as obvious. And in the 50, it's not there at all, or well, slightly, but not much. So out of all of these, I would say my favorites are definitely the 40%. You've got the exact same grip, which is really cool. I think 20, 30, also really nice. I guess I like more of the, a bit more open structures. I think this one becomes, a bit too flimsy um this could be really cool for some effects or something on top of something else for example if i just grab this other color this is the grid 10 as well and i overlap that with the five it's a different size but you can kind of see what kind of effect that can create by itself these two are a bit too flimsy i would say but yeah you can create quite cool things by overlapping them like this other than that, I would say these, I think from, let's say, this is 80. Even the 60 already, I would say this becomes way too thick. It, it becomes more like plasticky. So I would say either the thickness needs to go down for these or it needs to be a different purpose like for example bags or shoes then this is useful and in that case i actually really like the 70 because it has a really nice grit so that would be one of my favorites 50 i don't know i'm not I'm not too fond of this one 
I think all of these are all right. I would say these are my favorites. The 30 to 40 and the 70. All of them with a, a different purpose, I would say. So there we go. In the comment section below, let me know if there's anything you want me to create with the grit infill, um, be it a bag, a shirt, or something else crazy. Be creative. Send a picture to probably DM me on Instagram. That's the easiest. Um, I'm going to pick one person whose design I will make in a next video, not necessarily the. I will then go through the entire process of whatever picture it is that you've sent to how do we get that into a design? How do we 3D model that? Of course, it will be slightly different than the initial picture because I mean, the build plate is 30 by 30. That has limitations. Not everything is possible. And so it might need to be cut down a little bit, might need to be changed a little bit, but in the end, it's gonna be whatever it is that you've sent into a 3D printed design. That's it for this video. See you next time.